Welcome to What's the Score, the first one of the 20, 2021 season. Here's <laughs> away Sunday 4.30 kickoff. Uh, joined by Matt Jones, as usual, but given the uh, all the restrictions we're under lately, we are at our relative houses. Matt, looking forward to this one? Sort of, yeah. Sort of. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. Just, just saying that we used to do, last season we used to do this in like a, a Ponzi coffee shop in town, didn't oh, we? It was. This, was. this was like the highlight of my week. I don't know if that says anything <laughs> about that my week usually went, but yeah, I used to look forward to uh, just ponting out somewhere doing this. Um, the game we played against them in lockdown was possibly the most tepid game of the entire restart. Um, this one surely can't be any worse. Uh, I think I think in that game, the, the, both teams would have been quite happy to just leave the ball in the centre circle, <laughs> take the draw. They scored by virtue of a weird deflected goal that we conceded again against Leicester. <laughs> so, well, this, I think what was there frustrating about the, the last one was the it was after Leicester, wasn't it? This one, so we came back and we had Liverpool at oh, home. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Liverpool at home, which we drew. Then we went to Norwich and won in a terrible game. Then we played all right for half an hour against Leicester and won on the, the back of that. Mm. We'd taken seven points from nine. And we people started to go, well, you know, we keep this up. You know, we, we could get European football. And now is the time for Everton to show that they're not Everton anymore by going to yeah. Tottenham and not doing an Everton. And we went to Tottenham and did an Everton. And the reaction after it was really, like, was loads of anger, wasn't there? Like, people were, mm. really, you know, rightly so, to be honest, were really pissed off about it. And, they were absolutely nowhere near it that night. And I think it took Anthony Gordon coming on for the last 10 minutes to sort of give us half a sniff of doing anything. And he was the one that sort of lit up the team that night. But it, it is it is the same sort of scenario, isn't it, in some senses? But it's not because you want to feel like this weekend that Everton can go there and show that they're not the old Everton mm. uh, and, and by bringing in new players. But you've still got this sort of feeling in the back of your mind that, you know, it's, it's going to take a while for all all this to settle in, even after bringing in those three new players. So, I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm a little bit apprehensive about it, just 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 primarily because I don't want the positivity and the the goodwill that we've all felt over the last few days to just you know disappear from the fan base. With, with well, the result. Yeah, I think I think both teams have got a few new signings, and obviously we've got the most high profile one. I was listening to the um, the preview you did. Oh, with Flav, yeah, he was great. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, I love the uh, the mutual disdain of Liverpool as well. <laughs> yeah, that was nice to hear. Um, but yeah, he's saying you know they they've got Hoiberg and obviously he's their highest profile sign. They got Lo Celso as well and uh, Doherty, who yeah. is a great sign. I think for twelve million. But I think Hoiberg's the one who he's not going to set the pulses racing the Tottenham, is he? Uh, really, and I think yeah, I think the lad who was on the Tottenham lad who was on was saying. Uh, they could be, they could slip into sort of Mourinho's pragmatic outlook of a game, which isn't very Tottenham. It's not what their sort of reputation's built on. Um, but yeah, so he'll he'll definitely go straight into the middle. For us, what do you reckon? Do you reckon Alan and Decore will come straight in? I think Alan's probably the most likely, isn't he, at the moment? Yeah, because I think it's he's actually been doing a bit of training with Napoli, I think hasn't he? Was part of their their training camps. I think as far as I'm aware, the core was doing individual training at Watford, so I can't imagine he would have been doing much 11 aside, you know, match preparation. And Hamez, I've got no idea. He's just been hanging out in the Titanic gym, and he, for <laughs> the so I don't know how much, how much work he would have done there. But no, it's, I think, I think, I think the two midfielders are the ones you look at and say, right, mm. those two will, will probably come in. I don't. I don't know. It's really hard to say. I'll, I'll be surprised if Rodrigo started. I'll be really surprised. Yeah, if, I think yeah, I would be as well. I think he's, you know, you feel like he's going to be on the bench and then if we're, you know, 1-0 up, you get him. I don't think there's any scenario after with 20 minutes left, you don't bring him on, if that makes sense. Mm. You know, to, to, yeah, to, definitely. To help the team. So, I've got a feeling that Sigurdsson will play, whether that's tucked in off the left-hand side or, or behind the striker. Um, I, yeah, I... I it wouldn't surprise me when sort of like a, a, a bit of a diamond in there with you know the two new central midfielders Gomez and then Sigurdsson and then Richarlison and Carver Lewin just just where they want. I think you might look at Walcott for Tottenham away and think a bit lightweight. I think mm. you look definitely at Bernard and Iwobi in some of these away games and thought they're both a little bit lightweight as well. So maybe the way you'll go is just by packing that that central midfield area um, and getting four central midfielders. I have a really narrow across in a four or in a diamond or you push Richarlison out to the right, Sinks and out to the left and go four, three, three, four, five, one. 
But, you know, he, he's not given much away, has he, in regards to the fitness of these lads yet. So I suppose we're all sort of just clutching the straws and, you know, sort of figure out what, what it's going to be. What, what do you reckon? Yeah, I think the only thing he did say was he said, we'll, uh, we'll check on Fabian Delph. And I think everyone was like, not ask me. Yeah, don't bother. Just, just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't need to ask. <laughs> yeah, I, I, th- I actually think, yeah, I think the diamond would make a lot of sense. Uh, if, you, if you put Alan in there, you know, it, it could, maybe I'm being too optimistic, it could bring a little bit more out to Sigurdsson. It could bring the best out of Gomez. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I think I, I would like to see the core in there if possible. I think the, there's not been much of a gap between the end of last season and the start of this. So yeah. it's, like a, it's not like a usual pre-season, is it, where you could lose your fitness if you've not been doing intensive training. So maybe go and I'd like to see. I think, I think everyone would be a little bit deflated if we, if we see the team sheets and it's pretty much the same. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Definitely, definitely the potential for this, but it, that it could be the same team that lost to Bournemouth, um, obviously without Holgate in. It, which it, poses another thing at the back, doesn't it? So what are you going to say then? I was just going to say, in, in regards to midfield, it does just feel like the sort of game where you, you'd imagine he's just going to think, I'm just going to pack that area of the pitch. And it, it, yeah. you know, it, it might mean having four centre mids in the, the line-up and we're all going, well, where, where on earth for all they play and they're all central midfielders. But it does just feel like the one where, you know, it's just a case of getting into a shape, you know, pack the midfield. Because the, the, the game against them after lockdown was so low in quality you just sort of feel like if Everton had been a bit more functional we'd be able to get more of a foothold in that area of the pitch you probably would have got a draw at least out of that match yeah like definitely. you said whereas Spurs have you know got a bit better under Mourinho and you know towards the end of the season and they signed Hoiberg who's got a bit of steel to them you look at their midfield and you think apart from myself so it's it is very similar to, to ours in regards to just functional footballers who will run up and down and play simple passes it feels like if you just clog that area of the pitch and you can hit them on the break a little bit, then that's where we might get some joy. But like you, like you were going to go on to say there, I think probably the area that's been overlooked a little bit is that we might be a little bit light at the back, especially mm. if Spurs have got, you know, Kane and Son and, and Bergvine, whoever plays on the right-hand side for them um, in, in the side, because as well as Bramfleet did towards the end of last season, I have to be honest, mate, I'll be apprehensive about him and Michael Keane going up against, against Kane oh. and John. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's made a fit for it. I think he said he's fit, but he's, he's been recovering from an injury, hasn't he? So mm. uh, I'm not t- I, I'm not t- sure how many of the preseason games he's played. That's off me. I'd actually can't even, can't yeah. even think. But no, 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 it's, yeah, I, I think it'd feel a bit better if, if he was in with Keane. I think yeah, if you if you if you throw Brantwaite in, although he did well towards the end of the last season, it, it's a bit like you know, can he really play that? And we can't be pinning any hopes on him at all. We can't be you know getting carried away. Although he is going to be the best centre half in the world, but. <laughs> I'd be way right now, like he didn't play against lads like Kane and Son, did he? You know, no. in, in, in those cases, you know, he, he did okay in the second half against Wolves. Um, struggled maybe a little bit more in the game against uh, Bournemouth towards the end, but you know, he played against Villa, who had I, don't, I can't even remember their strike. Was it Wesley or someone like that? Some no, I think it was, yeah, one of, one of those lads. Um, and then for Sheffield United, was it McBurney and McGoldrick? You know, there's, there's a there's a big jump up between quality between those players and. Harry Kane, Son, Deli Alley, whoever's going to be in that area of the pitch for, for Spurs, especially away from home. And, you know, not, not, not giving the lad any, any stick here by any means because, you know, he, he shouldn't be ready to come against those players. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But if he, if he starts the weekend, I think it, it could be a bit of a worry. But in the same breath, maybe you'd say that maybe there's a better midfield in place now to, to provide protection to, to someone like him if, if, if we are going to go there and try and sit in quite deep, which I think we'll probably end up trying to do anyway, to be honest. Yeah, I would imagine that the the, uh, the right back spot will be interesting as well. Given uh, John Joe Kenny got number two today, did that surprise yeah. you? Yeah, yeah, it did actually. Yeah, yeah, me too. He's, I think uh, I I always get feel like this with with teams that are you know trying to push for Europe and have a squad which has got you know two players in every position and all that. Like the manager sort of gets to a point in the window and you just go, you know, it's a it's a backup fullback. We'll make do. We'll just mm. you know you're probably not going to need them that much. We're not a team that's, that really relies on our fullbacks getting forward, like you know, like the Reds do or or like Man City do. It's very much get the ball forward quickly. There's no real time for passing plays and patterns and, and overlaps and all that. So maybe Angelotti just looked at it and gone, well, Nkunku looks pretty good. He'll be he'll do fine for left back. And yeah. Kenny's played in the Premier League before. He did well last year. He knows the football club. You know, he'll be fine. He'll be well, fine. Yeah. Right he pretty much said that in the press conference, didn't he? He, he sort yeah. of said, I think he was asked about a couple of the players and he was asked about Kenny, it was interesting. He, 
He never really at one any point said he was a good player. He just said, you know, yeah, he, he works hard. He knows the club. <laughs> he did well at Schalke. He, so he, so he was dead, dead cagey about it. But yeah, I think you're right. I think he's, he is just going to be back up. Um, I thought we may have cashed in if possible this summer. Just mm. because it would have been like pure, what, 10, 15 million profits. Still might have been, isn't it? Still could, yeah. It's, 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 it's mad, isn't it? It's still like a part of months ago, isn't it? Yeah. In this window. October 19th or something like that. Matt. Yeah, something like that. So you know, I've seen more links to Arias today as well. Although you know, 14 million euros. What I want to, you know, I think the reports were, I wouldn't pay that for him. I'd, I'd rather just get him in on loan. If you're going to sell Kenny and say, right, we'll, we'll, you know, it's like the goalkeeping one where you sort of go, we'll just sort that next summer. There's, there's bigger problems afoot here, but yeah, yeah. It, it, it is a bit of a worry, isn't it? You know, even even if Kenny doesn't do well, Coleman hit and miss, isn't he? Really, yeah. really yeah. Hit and miss at this point in his career. Hopefully the he can be galvanised by the the break and can, can do pretty well, but um, and then you look at the other side of Luca Dean, someone who I think saying this on the kick about last night, and I think he probably had a bit of a an underrated end to the campaign, given all the the drama that was going on. How poor Everton were in general. He, he was really consistent and starting to look back to you know what he what he was in his first season at the football club. So f- fingers crossed he can he can get back to those levels again. Although it has to be said, mate, with, with Rodriguez around, he's not going to be taking many corners and free kicks, I think, is he? I wouldn't have thought so, no. God, yeah, that's uh, a... <laughs> yeah, that's an embarrassment to Richard's at Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Means, uh, I think it's going to be at least third on the pecking order now, which is, which is sad. Yeah. I mean, at least we've seen him score one at Blackpool. <laughs> yeah. If there's ever a game he wants to score in, his first free kick, it would have been that one. Um, couple of stats on the old head-to-heads. You mentioned on the... Preview show. Oh, yeah. This is the most played opening day fixture in the top yeah. flight. I think there's been 11 times, and it's the second time in my lifetime that we played them on the opening day. And incidentally, both times we played West Brom on the second game. Oh, okay. It's dead weird, yeah. 84, 85, and 2016, 17, I think. I think we also were going to. So we played them in Cummins' first game, didn't we? In 2016, was that? Yeah, 2016, 17, one all. Obviously, we've got this one, but we were going to play them as well, I think, in 2011, but it got called yeah. off, didn't it, because of the, the London riots? Yeah. Yeah, so we played them later on, but both of those seasons, we finished first and seventh. So I'll we'll take either of them. Yeah, just season, like bang in the, stop banging the middle, three or third or fourth will be fine, yeah. Yeah, that'll be all right. And incidentally, in 84 85, well, we definitely lost the first game because that was my first ever game, but battled 4 1. Um, I think we lost against West Brom as well. Oof. A shocking start and a shocking end end to that campaign, but well, uh, I'm sure everyone will be dead calm if we if we lose our first two games, mate. Anyway, you can oh yeah, everyone will be measured about it. Oh, yeah. yeah, there'll be no Angelotti out shouts and all that, will there? No, it'll be like that dog in the burning house gif. <laughs> <laughs> um, interestingly, John Pickford's never kept a clean sheet against Spurs. And well, you were going to say never kept a clean sheet then. I was, yeah, it feels like it, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> against Spurs. He's conceded 22 goals, which is more than against any other club. Mm. And Harry Kane scored nine in his last nine against Everton. He, yeah, but he, I think he's one of them players, isn't it, where you go, oh, he always scores against us and anything, well, he actually just always scores against everyone, doesn't he, really? Yeah, which was interesting. actually just going back to that match preview again. It was interesting to hear that he, he's a bit of a problem for Tottenham. As good as he is, yeah. It's hard to get a backup for him because no one's getting in ahead of him. And then if he's out, you've got no one to go in that spot. And he's increasingly out and injured, isn't he, at the moment? Yeah, it's a nice headache to have, like, but... Yeah, absolutely. But, no, he's just... He's one of them, and he's like... I think you you appreciate how good he is when you see him live, Katie, and, like, in the way he uses yeah. his body and his movements and everything like that. It's just all those little things. I think sometimes you're watching him and you, you think he's... You know, he's, he's great technically and a great striker of the ball, but he's... Not the, the quickest, not you don't think he's the, the strongest, but he does all those little gnarly, nasty things that a that top centre forward does. And you know, our defenders down the years obviously just haven't, haven't been able to cope with it. Um, but perhaps if Mina plays and Keane plays, you know, that, that's the that should be the physical side of it handled. Um, but he's just he's one of them, mate, and he's just a, he's just a great player. And if he, if he has a good game and you know, he gets a couple of chances, which he inevitably will, he's probably going to stick one, one of them away. And yeah, you know, it's. So I think it, I think it's I think that's sort of been overlooked a little bit. By, they, they have really got really good players. They are at home. Mourinho's teams historically have been solid to beat on their own patch as well. So mm. that's why I'm probably a little bit you know I'm, I'm excited about the season. I think we're going to do well, but it's probably why I'm a little bit more apprehensive than most 
and it's only really about this particular game, I reckon, because I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be a tough one for us. Albeit, you know, I'm excited to see the new lads play. Yeah, it, it's a hard opening game, and it, it's a ground where we don't um, historically win. So we had that little purple patch where we won three on the spin. Yeah. Uh, the last one, I wrote it down. I wrote it down. You know, in 2010. Uh, or 2009. It was something like that. Got like a a yeah, nil. yeah, Pino had a shot, yeah, and it just... It yeah, that was it, yeah. Him, and we, yeah. Won, we won the two before that as well. Hmm. Before that, we'd not won there since 84, 85. I think the two wins there as well, that you mentioned, were really early in the campaign. I think mm. one was in 2007 and we won 3-1. And I think Les got yeah. scored. Maybe Stubbs scored a free kick as well. Yes, he did, yeah. And uh, the other one was when Andy Johnson scored. We had 10 men because Kilbang got sent off. Kilbang got sent off, yeah. That, yeah, that was in August because I was in... I was in Belfast at a wedding that weekend. Both of those were second games of the season. So yeah, they could have been about this. You never know, but the uh, history is definitely not on our side because it is another one of those grounds where we we have traditionally struggled. The, the one against Coomer. The way ground, really, yeah. apart from West Ham. Yeah, and the other one with Coomer was we... He basically went mad, didn't he, for the first hour and then he were hanging on massively, weren't he, for the last... The last half an hour, they, they clearly weren't quite yeah. fit to, to play a pressing style and, and they really struggled. But Yeah, <laughs> we were all made up, weren't we, thinking, oh my God, this pressing game is going to be brilliant when they get <laughs> amazing and then it never happened again. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, it's a bit, would, would you take a draw? Yeah. Yeah, you, you've got it, haven't you? You know, going... I know, I know first game of the season, it's pretty much... It could be a game of chance, couldn't it? If the team's going to slip up, it's going to be in the first day. You get some absolutely insane results opening day. But thinking realistically, you're going away to Spurs. As you said, Mourinho spares. Mourinho doesn't lose at home very often. Yeah, I think you'd have to take a draw realistically about you. Yeah, I'd take a draw. I think it probably will be a draw as well. I could see us scoring early and then clinging on a little bit and then them getting one back and then just a bit of, bit of backs to the wall and seeing it through. But... I'll be happy with that, mate. As long as they don't get beat, I think. And I, I imagine that's what the manager will be thinking as well. Just just get out of there with, with, a, with a point. You've got a newly promoted team at home next week, which should be a great opportunity to get three points on the board. And I think our running's not too bad after that, is it? Up until we play the Reds no. five games in or something like that, is it? Yeah, something you know, like that, yeah. If you get through this one and you just get a point, the next three games are a great chance to build momentum before the derby. So, yeah, fingers, fingers crossed anyway. But um, just... More than anything, excited to see what the team's going to be and how we're going to set up. Because at the moment, sitting here now, we don't think anyone's got a clue, have they? No, not really. As you said, Dan Sloth, has been very cagey about it all, hasn't he? Mm. Checking on his, uh, <laughs> his trip into town last night. He didn't want to be there, did he? That was a, a mad photo, that, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I thought it was photoshopped at first. <laughs> well, it looked, it looked like a Cold War Steve, I think someone said. Yeah. Well, didn't it, yeah? It was, a bit, it was a bit like when Mishiri found the Sky Sports News and I was like, there's no way that was him. And I've always yeah. been, like it sort of transpired afterwards after the reports, like yeah, that actually that actually was him speaking on the phone. <laughs> uh, sort of like that to us. So today I was like, ah oh, no, someone's someone's put Carlo's face on that. But yeah. But I mean, he's he's done some dying out this week, hasn't he? Betting his missus. Yeah, I know he, he must and he, he must be sick of like getting asked to go to Italian restaurants in town. <laughs> I, know, I know I'm Italian and everything, but Christ, come on. There's only about three good ones as well, to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be a better Italian soon, up opposite Central. Oh like, yeah. <laughs> list, yeah. Any Italian, any Italian restaurants in uh, Bootle Strand? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, rocking up a pizza or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just go. Yeah, just go with the American slice. Yeah. Oh yeah. There you go. That, that's probably one of the better ones, to be fair. Yeah. It is actually. It's an absolute belter. Uh, I forgot to get scores in, by the way. This being the first one. Completely. Everyone, just assume everyone said we're going to win. Nah. Fair enough. Yeah, Dave said we're going to win 5 0, actually. There we go. Yeah. And Mosey, Mosey said uh, 7 1 to Everton. Um, and Jose Mourinho will quit halfway through the game. I think Paddy said 5 0 Tottenham. Yeah. Yeah, bad news, Boyland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's got to be good news, Greg, and bad news, Boyland, with them soon. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, mate. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, do you know what? I reckon I'll go for a draw, but I'll, I'll, I'll flip it the other way and say Tottenham will go ahead. And we'll equalise. Because that's the nicest way to draw, isn't it? Yeah, but the really guys free kick later on, something like that. Oh, God, 94th minute. Yeah. Nicer if we won, obviously. But <laughs> yeah, I'll take, I'll take that as an opening day. Last minute equaliser from a Rodriguez really free kick. All over. Yeah, that would be sweet. Hopefully, you'll get some game time. 
I think he will. I think As he said will. before, I can't see a situation where he doesn't come on with 20 minutes left, no matter what's happening in the game. I mean, he's looked good in training, hasn't he, and stuff, so... Yeah. Although he looked, fed, he's... Up the, looked fed up at the end of that press conference, didn't he, yesterday? Oh, God, yeah, neither of them wants to be there at all. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, right, I'm going to have to do this, we'll just give him 10 minutes and then... Yeah. And then we'll... <laughs> that, question, that question made me howl as someone said do you reckon you'll be able to like handle the pressure of being at Everton it's like a play for Real Madrid <laughs> yeah I kind, of, I kind of knew where he was coming from but it, it wasn't phrased the best was it like yeah. everyone's going to be looking at you now yeah but, and so yeah. Been I mean, the he's been the, the best player in the biggest competition in the world played for the biggest football club in the world played for the biggest club in Germany you know I'm yeah sure. Sure, he'll be fine. Sure, he'll but be fine. he's never played in front of the park end. That is true, mate. That is true. You and your horse can make or break a man. Hordes. Yeah, me, Mosey, and Sutton. <laughs> Absolute static for being uh, a show. Uh, I'm sure it won't come to that, <laughs> right? Um, I am off to do mailbag now. Um, oh, boy. I'm recording that in 20 minutes. So if anyone hasn't subscribed to the Blue Room Exit, do that because mailbag's dead good. It is really good. It's, you know, it's, it's all about the guests and the questions. I just throw the questions out there. The new well. format's fantastic. Do you know what? I think your, um, your fingers on the buzzer style definitely work that. Oh, sh- shouting out at a random Everton oh, player. It's a belter. What's yeah. been the best shout you've had so far on that? Um, I think, I think Mosey said Joe Max Moore when he was on. Oh, I, just, I remember Owen saying Lee Tai, but that was his answer to the question as well. Ah, okay, so it's just doubled up. Yeah, that, that, I mean, that's classic park style, isn't it? <laughs> Basically defensive football and mailbag, that. Just shouting Burnley players out by accident. <laughs> Got them on the line. Are you doing post-match tomorrow? Uh, yeah, Sunday. I don't know who's on it. Oh, Sunday, sorry. Yeah. Who's who on it with, yeah, but obviously we're going to Mike the Ash's birthday on Saturday, so I'm sure we'll all be a little bit tender after that as well. Yeah. I reckon, yeah, it's going to be watching that one kipping on we the couch, really, isn't it? You need the toffees to, to lift spirits after a, a boozy day. We'll, we'll yeah, I would, I would say so. Right, that's all for this week's then. Uh, we'll be back with Blue Monday and back with the weekly next week on YouTube. Yeah, all sorts of made subs weekly, uh, nail bag, all that kind of thing, yeah, next week. So there's tons, there's already tons on Blue Room Extra with all the new signs and stuff. I've interviewed about all three players with. Really good journalist, so check that out if people haven't already. Uh, but yeah, we'll be back again next week. Yeah, and if you're not subscribed, hit subscribe and tell your mates about it as well. Nice one. We will see you next time. Have a good weekend. Up the toffees. <laughs>